Hi, it's Jennifer McGuire again, and thanks for stopping by. Today I am again a part of the case study challenge blog, and I'll talk about that in a moment. And I'm going to show you how I create a floral wreath. Now I know lots of people have done this before, but I thought I'd share some tips and tricks on how I created mine. And the, I worked really well with the stamp set that I wanted to use. I'm also going to show you how I got the Wink of Stella glitter pen to work for me, because I've heard that some of you have had some trouble, so I have one to show you. So you can see that little bit of glitter there from the Wink of Stella pen. Now, as I mentioned, this is part of the case study challenge blog where they take a designer and pick some of their older cards to use as inspiration for newer cards. So this is an older card of mine, and I was inspired by it to create the floral wreath and also some of the colors. So this is where the inspiration came from. So now back to my card, I want to create a wreath, and the way that I find this best to do is to trace a circle onto my card. So I have a four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch card, and this is just a circle die. You can use anything, a, a roll of tape, you can use a cup, anything you want to trace a circle with pencil lightly onto your card. I find that if you trace a circle, this makes it so much easier to get a nice round wreath. Now I'm using Hero Art Shadow Inks today along with this awesome stamp set. This is new from Simon Says Stamp. It's got all these great flowers that piece together. And the stamp set I think is called Life is a Journey. It's brand new. Now what I do is I've got my circle, but I'm going to erase the areas I'm going to stamp. Because if you stamp over the pencil, sometimes it traps that pencil behind it and it's hard to erase it. This is the fresh peach color of the Hero Art Shadow Ink. It'll stamp kind of splotchy and uneven, but as it dries it'll be nice and smooth and give you great coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and erase the other areas before I stamp over them. Now I usually do things in odd numbers, so I have five flowers here in the fresh peach color. And I usually cluster two of them together. I think that just kind of helps with giving a little bit of variety. So you see I have those two flowers next to each other on the left. Next I'm going in with a like, kind of almost a soft red color. It's called Pale Tomato from the Hero Art Shadow Inks. And I'm going to stamp a smaller flower along this way too. Now with these smaller flowers, I don't care if I'm even or odd, but I think with the bigger ones it's important to go with an odd number. It just helps with the design. Next I'm going in with a little more of an orange color. This is soft cantaloupe. So I have a mix of peach, red, and orange on this. And they're all nice uh, muted colors. That's one of the nice things about the Hero Art Shadow Inks. So now I need to create some masks. So while I have my stamps out, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just using yellow ink just because it randomly was there. It doesn't matter what color ink you use. I'm stamping this on Eclipse masking tape, um, paper. This is a nice sticky, kind of like a post-it note sticky, that will work as a great mask. If you don't have this, you could use a post-it note or even a piece of typing paper. You can stamp on, cut it out, and put a little temporary adhesive on the back and use that as a mask. So now it's time to go in and add some of the green here that you see I did the masking for. So I'm peeling the back off the Eclipse uh, masking paper and I'm going to place this over my flower. So I'm going to pick this one and this way I can stamp a leaf over this without getting that nasty overlapping look. And there are a variety of leaves in this set. So um, I'm just going to pick some to randomly go along here. I'm starting out with these two because they're kind of fancier than the others. I'm just going to do a few of these on here. And you can see I'm kind of positioning these so that it fills in that circular area um, around this that forms this wreath. So this kind of I use this bigger leaf stamp to kind of fill in the open areas that I don't have flowers in. So there's really no rhyme or reason to how I do this. I'm using the Hero Arts Green Hills Shadow Ink for this. It's a nice, bright, vibrant, vibrant green. One of the things that I really like about this stamp set, along with other stamp sets to kind of build up images, is that there's lots of pieces in here that add great color and layering and create a one layer card. One of the things that's in the stamp set that I like is this little kind of stem here. You'll see it's got three little ends to it. And then there's a berry stamp that goes with it, and it'll stamp the three little berries in the perfect position. So I'm just going around and again filling in some of those open areas and making sure that I'm kind of ending up with a nice rounded wreath. So if there's any areas that don't seem as rounded, I'll just fill it in with these stamps. So this is the three little berry. Watch how easy this is, and it just stamps the berries perfectly along that little stem piece. And that was the soft pool ink. So now that I've done a bunch of these, I'm going to go through, and there's a ton of little leaf images on this stamp set too, and I'm just going to go and add these along the wreath. Now you can see little areas where there's some gaps, or that it's just not rounded out as nice as the others, and that's just where I'm going to go in and fill in with these leaves. And you can see how fast it is to move the little mask around to quickly do this. Then there's this teeny tiny little leaf here that I'm going to go in and fill up any open little spaces. So you'll see there's a little open space over here and then one here on the bottom. And there we have it nice and rounded out. 
This card design would be a fun one to make several of at once while you have all the inks and stamps out. Just go through and do all the flowers, then all the leaves, and just keep it moving. Now for the center of these flowers, I wanted a little dot of the Butter Bar yellow ink. So I have that stamp that I use for the berries. It's three little circles, but I'm only inking up one of the circles. So you'll see that's why I'm doing on the corner of the ink pad. I'm just inking up one circle and stamping that as a little dot in the center of all the flowers. Now there wasn't a teeny tiny flower or little dot for the center of these small flowers, so I'm just using my stylus. I just press the stylus onto the ink pad and then dot it onto my card. It also makes this fun little kind of little berry dots around the card also to kind of fill in any open spaces I had. I love using my stylus. Uh, any stylus works. You could even use a pen cap, but it's a great way to add little dots of ink. Now for the greeting, I'm just cutting it here. Don't panic. <laughs> the stamp will still work just fine, but I'm going to um, cut that so that the thank you fits nice into the center of that wreath area. So I'm putting the two words up against each other and kind of centering them there. And then I'll take my acrylic block and press it right on top. And there we have the thank you arranged in a way that it will work right in the center of that wreath. Now, if you are anti-cutting of stamps, you could just ink up the word thank and stamp it, and then ink up the word you and stamp it below it. So you could do it by not cutting up the stamp if you wanted to also. Now, for some reason, I'm not good at leaving good enough alone. So whenever I have a one layer card, I like to add a little shimmer to it just to create some interest. I don't know. I have issues. But anyways, I like to use the Wink of Stella glitter pen. It's really subtle and just adds a soft shimmer. Now, I've heard that many of you have had trouble with the new Wink of Stella pens. When you get them, that, that too much of it comes out. Well, my friend Stephanie Clark and I were kind of talking about it, and we figured out the solution. So I thought I'd share it here. Thanks to her for helping me figure this out. Uh, so I got a new pen so I can show you how to prime it and get it ready to use and get good results. So this is the Wink of Stella pen. This is the clear one. It comes with that little black ring. You want to take it out and then you can pitch that black ring and then screw it on tightly. Now you want to give this a nice good shake before you open it. I already, sh I already shook it and I'm going to shake it some more. The more you shake it the better. Now you got to work all of this ink out into the tip. So you're going to squeeze it and kind of pump it. Now be patient. It's going to take time. Just be patient and keep going. You'll see it start to come out the sides there. See it start to come out there? Now this has potential to have a great mess. It'll start to ooze out this side, uh, the little end here, by the black. It'll make you panic, but don't worry. Just keep squeezing until you see it starting to come through on the brush. So it'll start to come through the brush tip. Now have a baby wipe handy so that you can wipe off any that you saw it kind of bubble out the side. Yes, this is a mess, but it won't do this again. After you've primed it, you'll be fine. Now see that ink is starting to come out. Go ahead and wipe the brush and the tip good and clean. Just clean it as good as you can. Take off as much ink as you can. Now as you do this, it'll first kind of come out this platinum color or the champagne color, but once you, keep sque um, once you keep wiping it off, you'll end up getting this subtle silvery clear color that works perfect. Now never again will you have to squeeze this and you'll never again have it oozing out. It will always just come out nicely. So don't ever squeeze it again. That's just for when you want to kind of prime it and pump it up to get it wor working at the beginning. So if it comes out a little platinum color or a little too intense at the beginning, just wipe some of it off and you'll end up with a nice clear shine. So there's the trick to the Wink of Stella pen. Now here I had a total random adding here. I'm using a soft pull ink pad and my stylus to add little dots to the berries that I stamped before. Just just a little something that makes a big difference. So there you have a card um, showing how to create a floral wreath just using any kind of little floral stamps which I'm sure we all have lots of and a circle die to trace. If you have any questions please head over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com and if you want to know any of the supplies they're listed in the description below here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.